Siberia, ravaged by the bloody tides of four, kings and sultans, dukes and emirs. Adversity makes for strange bedfellows, my friend. And you must treat carefully if you are to decide the fate of Iberia. I, Jufri the Hairy, have come to the conclusion that ruling is not fit for everyone. Luckily, I do not count myself as one of them, but the ins and outs of courtly life indeed leave me busy at every turn. Securing wandering knights and alliances has taken up most of my routine of late. If I am to take on Duke Bernard II and my liege, and take back what truly belongs to me, I am in desperate need of both. Indeed, it might be time to put them to the test, we shall see. Not everything is so serious though. My marriage to Antha was an unexpected surprise, but a welcome one. Forsaking the betrothal with Cornelia was an easy decision for the sake of my realm, for the future of House Barcelona. And while our marriage does not yet bear fruit, I am eager to become closer to my wife as we journey through life together. That will have to wait just a moment longer though, as I am currently deep into my studies of the Arabic language in the hopeful turn of events that will bring me closer to my neighbors in the south. The Iberian struggle rages on and there is much uncertainty, but perhaps being able to speak the language of these Muslims will break the ice towards a much larger cohesion for the region. If only the relations between my cousin and I held so much potential. Unable to discover any secrets in his court, I decided to hold on to his wife and newborn son as leverage against him, treating them fairly as one can in prison. However, a rivalry quickly devolved into deeper and more sinister levels as Sunyar attempted to have me trampled by an unruly crowd. Thank God in heaven for my knights and their bravery as they hacked me out of that assassination attempt and I survived without a scratch. Retaliation is my only course of action, and what better way to enact justice than to squeeze Sunyar where it's most desperate, throwing his wife and newborn son into their dungeons. No one lasts long in there, so we shall see what fates lie in store for them as my story continues and my house moves forward. Hello everybody, this is Havoc, and welcome back to another episode of Jufri the Harry and our Crusader Kings 3 role-playing experience. A couple of things right off the bat, of course. If at any point you are enjoying this video, you can give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, turn on bell notifications, and also leave your comments. I read all the comments, and doing any of those things will help you to push this video out to the masses, which has been greatly appreciated so far. Lastly, if you want to support the channel and provide something for yourself, you can go to my Nexus store, where I receive a small commission for anything that you purchase there, including anything from Crusader Kings 3. Something to think about and a great way to, again, support the channel while rewarding yourself. Now for the episode. I'm hoping that we can enact our war against Duke Bernat. Now, it's going to be a complicated process. The Duchy of Barcelona currently has increased his levies just as much as I have increased mine. He has 1,900 soldiers at his disposal, not to mention his ally, who only has 343, which isn't too much. My concern is that he has quite a few professional soldiers. And that's what's going to be rather difficult, because we don't have nearly as many. In fact, we only have light horsemen. We may need to dive into some professional soldiers, or what we could also do is we could... Look at some mercenaries. Now, I can currently afford some. The question is, once I were to go to war, it would drain my coffers rather quickly. Uh, however, it would give me a substantial leg up. By hiring even this many pikemen would be great. We don't need more horsemen. And unfortunately, I'm not in a position where I can afford you know, uh, a cohesive force of, you know, say bowmen or light footmen, which pretty much have advantages in all the terrains that we focus on. So the Sardinian band of Arborea is something that I would like to, to hire right off the bat. Unfortunately, I just, I can't, I cannot afford that expense. Not to mention, I'm not ready to take on Duke Bernat. 
Now, we do have allies of our own. We, we have three of them, actually. And I believe between the three of them, assuming they all joined, we would be able to take them on. And a, a reminder that uh, it's three years until we can take Count Sunyar's lands. Uh, so it may be more advantageous for us to go to war with Count Sunyar again, get another uh, region for ourselves, and then use that extra force, uh, finally kicking Count Sunyar out of his landed uh, realm, and then being able to take Duke Bernat on uh, rather quickly as he could potentially join against me, and I can't see why he wouldn't, because again, his wife and his son are now in the dungeons. So we'll have to see how that plays out as well. We are close to uh, learning our language of Arabic. I do believe it would go a long ways. And we're also trying to find secrets for our court. The last thing is again, our wife Count Antha. While uh, she is relatively warm towards me, let's see if we can't demand her conversion. It says she will convert. We'll see if she'll actually go through with it. So yes, we do have several things we can accomplish today. And I am hoping that in my story, as Count Jufri of Urgell, that eventually will quickly become a duke. And in a couple of months, it looks like my learning language of Arabic is a success. After lots of hard work, I finally learned the Arabic language. Endless hours practicing accentuation, sleepless nights, mimicking inflection, countless lessons mastering intonation. It was all worth it in the end. During my efforts, I looked to emulate Emir Yusuf's accent. I'm sure he would be impressed with my result, and of course, Andalusian peasants now respect me a great deal more. I feel accomplished, in which I could gain 150 piety simply because in this phase of the Iberian struggle, this is something that is highly encouraged, and it will trigger a, uh, a catalyst for the struggle as well. And I have the diplomacy chance to impress Yusuf. 60% is rather large we're gonna go for it yes we impressed yusuf with my our knowledge of arabic he gained 25 opinion on me which is great we also grow closer to forming a friendship with him which is awesome but now that we have our arabic as a language it's going to naturally help us a lot so we'll see how that goes let's mind my own business and get back to work also my wife has converted to catholicism which has helped us uh, grow a little bit closer, but now we're gonna push it even further. I'm going to romance her, potentially becoming soulmates. There's a 100% chance that within the next year, my plans will come to fruition. The time has come to let my feelings towards Countess Antha be known. I wanted to remember this day for the rest of her life. We could sing a love ballad, we could write a love poem, impress her by winning a sparring match, or go with my gut in the moment. Let's write a love poem. Candles burning low when I finally finish my poem before I send it, I give it one last read. Your delicate wit is the life-giving sun of my world. I have no other desire but to feel your lips touch mine, that I may know the depths of your love. You and I belong together. The waiting is unbearable. The thought of rejection makes me sick to my stomach. When her reply arrives, I tear the seal with shaking hands. While I cannot encourage you, Count Jufri, I am most, most grateful for your kind words, your faithful Antha. It's not what we wanted, but I think it'll have to do. A few moments later. The things that you do for love, am I right? I've been secured an invitation to a feast in Urgell and a seat closer to Antha. Despite my determined attempts, I am failing to strike up a conversation. She's probably rendered speechless by the intensity of my affections. Suddenly, the loudest fart I have ever heard erupts from our table. A few of the guests are looking at Antha. I must save her. It was me. I farted. We'll spend 60 or 150 prestige. There is a rather large chance that she is relieved and grateful and gains opinion of me. Uh, the gain, the uh, scheme would gain kindness as well. But <laughs> there's a 33% chance that Antha was not the one who farted. In which case, I would lose an opinion of her, or perhaps I should stay quiet. Let's go for it. The things you do for love. She is relieved and grateful indeed. <laughs> oh, Antha. Oh, my dear Antha. And while we're on the subject of 
things of that nature in some weird way. Despite her best efforts, my agent has yet to discover any secrets at Duke Burnett's court. He doesn't believe we'll find anything either. There's less going on here than a graveyard at noon, which sounds relatively fitting for Count Burnett. So let's just abandon it and we'll figure out another way to do what needs done. You know best. Sweet Lady Antha, I sigh as I kneel before her. My only desire is to bring you honor and happiness. Pray tell me, how can I prove my love for you? Antha gives me a long look. Lady Elisinda's necklace is lovely, she said, and nods her head in the direction of Baroness Elisinda, the wife of my spy master, Baron Gerard, but would look even better around my neck. Hmm. We could commission an identical necklace. We could offer Elisinda a favor for her necklace. We could steal it. That wouldn't be a good idea, and it's not anywhere near what I would do. Now, we don't have a reason to do this. We have the best chances in the world. We'll give Baroness Elisinda a Vilha. Yeah, we'll, we'll offer her a favor. In the midst of my romance, as the court is relatively quiet, I haven't been ignoring my martial lifestyle. And in fact, we have progressed fairly far into overseer and gallant. Now, what I think needs to happen, though, and to prep my war uh, against Count Bernat especially, we're going to get Never Back Down, which increases the friendly, or, yeah, decreases the friendly fatal casualties, as well as gives me advantage, which is going to be necessary. I can only hope that perhaps something will happen to where Household Guard can come into effect, in which case I would gain more knights than what Duke Bernat has in total, as he does have six knights. His allies have seven, which would bring a total to 13, whereas myself, I'm still only rocking six. It's not fantastic. However, I do have more knights uh, in reserve, as it were. Now, right now, we could take him on, but again, again, patience, caution. We are only 20 months from being able to go to war with Count Sunyar again, and I can unland him by this war, if I'm remembering correctly. In which case, that would give us all the things that we need to really then push into Duke Bernat. Let's see if we can't get it accomplished. As my desire to become soulmates increases, it's only increased over time, despite different attempts and perhaps failures and things of that nature. However, I think this is the opportunity that just might seal the deal. I'm attending a dance in Urgell to spend some time with Countess Antha. The mere thought of touching hands makes my heart jump. But when I arrive, I find her stuck in a conversation with my liege, Duke Bernat. This is the perfect opportunity. The brooding man drones on and on, which sounds exactly like him, totally oblivious to Antha's discomfort. My charms improve any conversation. I will take her place better that I suffer than her. This is something, ooh, chronic headaches for 10 years. Absolutely not. Enough. You are boring the lady to death. Now we spend a little bit of prestige. We go closer to forming a rivalry. No, absolutely. This is what I would do to rescue my Antha. And we've got an interesting development in our Legion's court. Both my cousin, Count Oli uh, Oliva, and I are held in esteem by our liege, Duke Bernat. I don't know that he considers me prestige, or uh, in esteem, excuse me. However, when it comes to handing out titles, honor, and wealth, one of us will always be the first among equals. The upcoming gathering at Barcelona Castle gives me a chance to ensure that I am the one with the Duke's favor. However, my cousin, Count Sunyar, has made no secret that he intends to sabotage my efforts. Oh, he's not giving me any reason to stay at peace with him, that's for sure. There's a chance that I become friendly with the Duke. 59% isn't fantastic, but it's not awful. Now, the best part about this is I get a weak hook, as well as gaining a good deal of prestige. I could illustrate that God already favors me, but mm, that's a little bit of a less uh, successful chance. I know how to catch Bernard's attention due to my attractiveness to Duke Bernard. That's a little weird. I don't know that we'd want to do that. Or we vassals work together, not a 
uh, not against each other. A fellow vassal opinion of 15 would actually be great because once I take over his lands, he will become my vassal. And thanks to the opinion modifier, we could definitely use him as a vassal uh, that would be supportive of us. We work together, not against each other. Absolutely. Every time I close my eyes, I see Countess Antha's face. Sleep will not come. I cannot wait another moment. Cloaked in the shadows, I make my way to the garden outside her living quarters. Mind you, I've been respectful of her the whole time. The side of Antha's chamber window makes my heart stutter. So close and yet so far, but wait. Who is that? Climbing up the tower. The shady figure stops by Antha's window and unlatches the shutters. My dear says in danger, I must save her, absolutely. The sounds from the struggle above is the greatest motivator I have ever known. Without a care for life or limb, I host, hoist myself through Countess Anthus's window. I feel as if I plunged into a frozen lake. Antha's on the floor, the intruder pushing her down, a gleaming blade between them. With a roar, I grab the villain by the collar and throw him into the wall. The rest is a blur. When the danger is over, I turn towards her. Antha, are you all right? I asked cautiously. As if my words were a spell, she finally unfreezes, throws herself into my arms. Thank God you are here, Jeffrey. I will never let you get into harm's way ever again. She becomes my soulmate. Ooh, I get to lay with her. We gain ten, She gains 10 opinion of me. And, of course, I gain a little bit of prestige thanks to my heroic actions. Brilliant! That's the best outcome we could have. Well... Potentially she could have died. But what better way to encourage the idea of a soulmate than to rescue your love from the throes of a potential assassin. With all the internal court action that's happened today, I want to focus and wrap up this section of my story by taking a look at the Iberian struggle. We are still pretty early into this phase of opportunity. Now, there's loads of different effects that this opportunity has on everyone involved. And in fact, I am involved, which is the, the deepest that I can be in. Now, things like fabricating claims are switched from a gold over to a prestige factor. We could potentially border raid our neighbors. The contract assistance, as we've seen, is feasible, but it's not for me right now. The best deal we have for us is that our mercenary hire costs are decreased by 30%. Now, that is a little bit more of an aggressive action. From a cultural effect, converting to an involved culture is less, of, uh, is less expensive, but it doesn't do anything for me. Now, we learned a new language, which actually triggered the conciliation phase, which is what I am in currently looking at uh, from my documents from my counselor. So that's good. We have triggered part of the consolation phase without a doubt. Now we could grant a title to a local noble. That provides prestige as well. Or we can increase the development of a county with a different culture. Uh, none of our counties uh, are in that realm of things yet, so we couldn't do anything. Now we're not going to convert. and There's nothing to convert within our realms. We can't do a holy war. Not that I would anyways, because again, I'm still focused on the idea that I can create some cohesion with my Muslim friends to the south, not division. Now, there are several other things that we can do. All of those, for the most part, trigger the hostility, which is not the phase that I want to be encouraging, nor do I want to be involved in at all. Again, I have enough people within my own faith, within my own culture to deal with. I don't need to be bringing in uh, outsiders. However, there are several things that I can do to trigger the consolation. It's not too far behind hostility, which is good. We want consolation to be the phase that uh, that wins overall. Now we could grant a, lo a county to a local noble. I, I'm not there at that point yet. We could grant uh, better contracts or titles to a vassal from a different faith or a different culture. Again, we're not quite there yet. However, amidst all of the drama that we have seen, I feel that it, inviting an involved ruler of a different faith or a culture to a feast has the potential to have some fun as well as do the things that need doing. Emir Yusuf is Mohaladi and is Andalusian as well. Can I invite him to a feast? He is in an army and he is currently occupied. That's very unfortunate. 
I wonder, ooh. He doesn't like me very much. He thinks Catholicism is evil and he's also zealous. I don't know that we'd be able to get anywhere with him. Emir Muhammad ibn Abdallah of Balencia. He seems a little bit more. Let's invite him to an activity. He would accept a hunt, not necessarily a feast. Why not a feast? Just curious. The struggle agenda. But he might do it for a hunt. Let's try it. Ah, he declined my invitation. Okay. Well, we will be persistent. And perhaps when this war is over, I will be able to start working with him. Because he is currently not enjoying his war whatsoever. And when he loses, it looks like he'll probably end up... Hmm, yes. We'll have to figure it out. I want to ferment, again, the idea of consolation. We will try to become more involved in the Siberian struggle in the future. My attempts were a little bit in vain today, but nonetheless, we can keep working at it. There are several things that we can do to become uh, more involved, but also to trigger the, the types of things that we are wanting to try and do within our realms. Guys, that will wrap up this episode. A little bit less action than what we're used to, but nonetheless, Count Anthus, or Count Antha, excuse me, she is my soulmate, and I was able to lay with her. So hopefully she will become pregnant and bear me an heir. As much as I love Myron to Barcelona, he is only my brother. I would rather have my own heir uh, to keep it as close in the family as possible. But guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. Crusader Kings 3 roleplay with Count Jufri of Urgell. We will be able to do all the things, I think, in the next episode. There will be wars. There may even be some more dramatic experiences. And we have to remember that Count Senor's wife and child are still in the dungeons. Guys, if you enjoyed any part of this episode, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, turn on bell notifications, leave any comments and counsel suggestions. I love the interaction we've developed so far, and I hope it continues. Other than that, you can take a look at my Nexus store. That way you can support the channel while getting a game for yourself. And last, but certainly not least, be on the lookout for the next episode, as I will hopefully be doing these every three to four days if I can get my schedule on time. Guys, Count Jufri of Urgell will continue. Stay tuned. And you must read carefully if you are to decide the fate of Iberia.